Hello, welcome to Chris Tech Rants and in this video I'd be ranting about the Bixky uh, water block with an active backplate for my RTX 3090 Extreme Water Force Water Block Edition and I've already installed it actually and I just tore it down again uh, I wanted to check on something uh, I wanted to check on the pads actually if they sat properly onto the PCB. As I've shown in my previous video, uh, I've already kind of uh, introduced the water blocks and the active backplate in the previous video. If you missed it, uh, check that video out, but I'd be showing them here again uh, later on. So there they are, the PCBs there. Here's the GPU block. And as you may notice, uh, there are still leftover fluids in there and pretty basic the now this one again uh what i bought is the ngv 3090 eorus x uh, this is actually for the eorus master version what i have here is the extreme water force water block edition uh, as i've mentioned in my previous video uh, main difference here are the capacitors uh, the master one uh, uses the round capacitors well this one's uh, with a flat one uh, i forget what uh, type of capacitor these are a anyway uh, going back to the block gpu block uh, basically all you have to do is attach them uh, thermal pads on the what do you call this elevated elevated portion here for the vrms uh, for the vrams and for the die itself um so that's basically it the thermal pad used that came along with this one is pretty good. It's pretty soft. It's, how do I say this? It's like a paste. Uh, what you don't want to do is the, the thickness of this pad is actually a 1.8 millimeter. What you don't want to do is what I did before. Uh, I actually used the same, uh, I actually used a 1.5 uh, millimeter thermal pad and what happened was the thermal pad i used was this one here well not actually this one i used the 1.5 one but this thermal right is kind of rigid uh what happened uh i attached it at the back uh it didn't sit properly uh problem with rigid thermal pads is it might make your pcb uh bend a bit so if you're going to be using uh, different thermal pads, uh, make sure it's you compensate for its uh, for the stock one's uh, softness. It's again, it's very similar to a paste already. So just take that into consideration. Maybe uh, using a thinner, maybe a, a millimeter of thermal pads if you if you really want to change them pads. But the the pads that it came with, the the one from Bixky is pretty good in my opinion and this is the link here we'll get back to this uh later on and the back plate it's for the back plate mm, actually uh about the bending of the pcb even when i'm using the stock pads the stock thermal pads when attaching it, it goes like this here. So let me just align this real quick. Should be something like that. When you align it like that, um, there you go. The portion here, or rather, the portion here, the portion here gets bent a little bit. Even when I'm using the regular, uh, the stock thermal pads it came with, it gets bent here. Uh, that happens when, uh, this is where the PCI, uh, where the um, display ports are, right? Uh, when I tighten the screw here on the upper right portion, uh, it bends the PCB. The reason for that is because here 
you only put uh, thermal pads here. There, there are no pads here. So that what I that's what I'd be trying now. Uh, I'll check later on if it becomes successful. I'll maybe put in a pad there, a pad or two. Uh, some of you may comment on that stacking up thermal pads, but anyway, uh, the reason why it needs to be two is the part where the capacitors are 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 uh, engraved so again with the 3090 master the the capacitors are a bit you know uh elevated but in this case since it's a uh, it's using a flat capacitor uh there's really no point in uh making this uh what do you call this um this part here lower and same goes here for the capacitors at the gpu die uh, at the back of the gpu die and yeah so but basically there's a stop here where the screws are uh supposedly you should uh screw them tightly as soon as the screw the this uh, knot here uh touches the pcb but even still uh it bends the it bends the pcb i think it's because there's no screws here uh since there are no screws here in this part in the vram part since there are no screws there the the screws are only from this side up until this side here so tendency is because of the thermal pads on the vrams it bends the it bends the pcb a bit so to mitigate that again uh, i might no i will be placing thermal pads here but uh you don't have to do that uh i'll uh, no, i will uh update you on that one later on if if it becomes uh if we'd be able to close the back plate properly we'll find out all right so now some pointers it's a bit difficult to align them, especially uh, it really is important to align them properly and tighten them properly, um, especially when trying this one out. Uh, I, I mentioned earlier, uh, I'll be stacking pads here, right? But if it comes off even by a fraction of a millimeter, uh, you'd have a hard time connecting this link. So make sure both the block and the active backplate sits properly onto the PCB. Otherwise, the link won't be able to uh, connect them properly. You'd, you'd have a hard time connecting this link. The effective way I noticed of doing things is attaching the pads onto the backplate or rather <laughs> onto the GPU block and attaching the PCB on over it. Uh, even the thermal paste, even the thermal paste attach it here. Uh, opposed to putting it on to the die itself it, it becomes easier to uh, put the PCB on top of the block so there you go uh, as I've mentioned uh, I've just placed uh, the pads where the elevated portions are uh, you'd want to be careful with the sides here where the for the VRAMs or for the VRMs um, if, if you uh, put too thick if the pads are too thick, it'll show on the side here. So if you have a vertically mounted uh, GPU, it'll be kind of irritating seeing that blue streak or strip there. So that's one point. And yeah. And let me just put thermal paste here. <laughs> too much. It's just right and yeah uh i just elevated the block there and so that's there and here we go let me just make sure i didn't miss uh, i actually missed uh before uh first few uh attempts with my 3070 card way back uh, i actually missed uh a part of the vram and uh anyway uh just make sure the pads are all set 
So there it is. And it's all clean. Alrighty. Let me just screw them real quick. Or rather, let me check it first. Let's make sure it's properly seated. Seems okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's okay. Okie dokie. So I've screwed them in place. One, two, three, four, that's it. Uh, make sure them uh, holes are aligned as well because that's where we'd be uh, attaching the active back plate. And what else? Uh, this is... This is what I've been uh, referring to. See, a portion of it's sticking out. So if that kind of thing uh, annoys you, uh, make sure it's uh, well within the elevated portion. But I'm good with it. Uh, it lets me know that the, the pads are sitting in properly. So, But again, uh, if this kind of thing annoys you, make sure it's well within the... Here, let me show you. Make, oh, it's not here. Make sure it's well within the allotted elevated portion. Uh, this one's lowered, so anyway. Okay, moving to the back plate. As for the back plate, um, for this one, you could attach the pads. There you go. You could attach the pads onto the PCB, no problem there. But as I've mentioned earlier, I'd be putting pads here as well. I'd be attaching pads here as well. Uh, in my previous uh, build, before I, when I first uh, attached this, I actually placed uh, thermal pads here as well, and it did, it didn't really affect the VRAM temperature, so uh, I might uh, do that still. Well, uh, I I act the reason why I placed some pads here, uh, I actually thought it'll help lower my hotspot uh gpu die hotspot but it didn't um yeah so there you go i already uh attached the thermal pads uh what you don't what you want to be careful on is obviously the most important part here for the back plate are the vrams right uh that's the main reason why we got the active back plate so just make sure you don't put too much pads uh, uh to the back part of the gpu die and on the capacitors here as well uh, again i just place them there because because of the lowered portion here and the lowered portion on the gpu die one pad is actually enough to to have it uh to have some contact with the back plate uh but as for the capacitors i'm not yet sure we'll find out but for the gpu die back side of the gpu die it attaches with just one pad and uh it's fair to assume that uh the capacitors will be attached there as well um yeah uh again the only reason i put this here is because the pcb bends on this part here I'm hoping by placing some pads here, it will uh, mitigate that. All right, let's sit this one down. And... So there you have it. Uh, it's not as crooked as before, but it still is, kind of is, but just a bit and now to attach the link uh you'd actually know that you didn't act you'd actually know that it's not properly in place or seated properly if you if you're having a hard time connecting this in and uh, oh, let's see yeah continuing um
So let's see if I'd be able to. That's in. All right, this is a good sign. This one here is in as well. Okay, this one's in. All right. And this one's in as well. So they're aligned properly. So that's good. Uh, as for the most part of the block, most of the screws are actually being uh, have contact with another knot uh, that's metal as well. But for the link here, it's being screwed into the acrylic. So you'd really have to be careful screwing this in place. You don't want to make it too tight. You might damage the acrylic. Alrighty, so there it is guys, hope you like it. Um, heads up, thermals are pretty good. Anyway, that's that and in my next video I'd be showing how it actually performs and as for this one, heads up, spoiler alert, uh, it can actually perform quite good with a 240 radiator uh, but the fans are running will be running at 100 rpm uh, or 100 percent rpm and that's about 2000 rpms in my case and uh, i'm actually changing my rad into a 361 let's see how that goes and i'll be comparing the results as usual to be expected and as for this video i hope you like it Again, hope it uh, helps someone and if you guys liked it, hit the like button, subscribe as well. See you in the next one.